this was the waves question. So it started off asking what's diffraction and what's interference. For nine marks, diffraction is waves passing through a gap or around a corner. And interference, uh, while well connected to that, that's really, um, I guess you could say it's the algebraic sum of two waves added together. Um, something you could just write down for the answers for these. Um, the spreading out of a wave into space beyond a gap, that's diffraction. And the second one, interference, is just adding the addition two or more waves to form a new wave. That was the marking scheme there. The second one, uh, it was the classic um, laser diffraction experiment. It gives you a bunch of numbers. Um, I don't think it gives you a diffraction grading. That's the, uh, the trick in this one. I think you might have to work that out at some stage. So the first thing it said was, um, we wanted to calculate the energy. Um, calculate the energy of each photon. That's E equals HF and C equals F lambda. Now you'll need to combine these. So it's a bit like, you know, Power Rangers. We've got one formula, another formula. You combine them into one mega formula. E equals HC over lambda. That is not in the log tables. But you know what? I just I just flip and learn that one off. That comes up so much. E equals HC over lambda. Or you can just have fun combining them all day long in the leaving search if you want. Okay. So uh, now that I've got E equals HC over lambda mega formula, uh, this question is a bit of a cinch now. I just fill in the things. Okay. So H, that's Planck's constant. Um, C, is this, that's just the speed of light. Speed of light. Uh, lambda, the wavelength, is in nanometers. Remember, n to the power of minus 9 nano. Okay? And when you get all that out, there you go. It's a tiny amount of energy. 2.8 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Absolutely minuscule. But then, it's the energy of a photon. So it kind of makes sense. There's the mark for that. Next bit. Sensors in the eye, they respond to single photons. Where in the eye are these located? Well, the retina. That's, you know, that's pretty much it. So I wrote down, the sensors are located in the retina. There you go, three marks. Two differences between electromagnetic radiation from a laser and from a lamp. Well, from a laser, it goes in a nice straight line like this. Lamp, it just sort of goes all over the place. Okay. Um, you could also say that, um, let's say if I got an infrared laser that would just be one tiny slice of the spectrum whereas white light is the whole full spectrum so you could write here laser light has just got one wavelength and you could say also laser is collimated there's loads of other things you could have said you could have said one frequency you could have said it's more powerful although well um you could have said it's uh, coherent coherent is a great word they love hearing that word okay Next one, uh, for this one you've got to derive the aid of a diagram, the diffraction grading formula. Now I've done this in a separate video, so I'll just, that's the a screen cap of it there, and I'll leave the marking skin here if you want to very quickly go through it. You can also just click on it to see the full video, where I kind of bring that through in a step-by-step -step explanation. Calculate the number of lines per millimeter on the diffraction grading in this experiment. Uh, okay, well we're just using n lambda equals d sine theta, d is the only thing we don't have there. Uh, so let's just see n. Oh, there's a trick. They didn't actually tell you, but you can see n is the second order. So there's a zero order in the middle. The next, that's n equals one in, uh, on either side. And these are the n equals two. Okay, so it's kind of symmetrical. So zero, one, two. n equals two. Lambda is 709. D we don't know, sine theta, well, we're using 34 for theta. So I just write down the formula, I rearrange it, I sub in the numbers, and I get d equals 0 0.2497. Very small, but it should be, because this is the gap in a diffraction grading, and that's smaller than the width of a human hair, so it's pretty small. There's the marks. What would you see on the screen if the laser was replaced by a white light source. With a green laser, uh, that's what you see. You see similar with the red. With a white laser, so uh, 
Just yet. <laughs> Wait, but why laser if there's such a thing? If you got a a red laser and a green laser and a blue laser and you sellotape them all together, you pretty much have a, a white light source. So it kind of makes sense that you'd see them all slightly spread out. Okay, you'd see a spectrum or a spectra. So a set of spectra from each of the colors would be seen in each of the order positions on the screen. Uh, all they wanted there in the marking scheme was you to mention spectra. You could say dispersion as well, splitting up the colors.